Welcome to Kumu 101 version 2. After I defined Relationships 101 implications in storytelling, I received a number of messages from people saying, well, this is all well and good, but when I went to Kumu to get started, it, it, the number of things that seemed to need defining was overwhelming and I was uncertain of where to get started. So what I've done to help people get past this is to create this project called Kuma 101, which defines all these things in the background so that one doesn't need to worry about all the things that need to be defined. You can just go here and, and start creating a relationship model. Now, where is this? The URL that's right here, https colon slash slash kumu.io slash stw slash kumu-101. Uh, if you go to that URL, and once you get there, if you simply go down here and click on fork this project, fork seems to be the programmer's terminology for clone, you go ahead and click here and you can create a version of this Kumu project that then belongs to you and comes with all of these things defined in the background. It has all of the script defined so that it provides different colors for different things. It identifies things which are stocks and variables, two different kinds of connections, adds to or same, subtracts from or opposite, and things that you identify are which are questions. And I'll give you a little bit more background into them in a moment. Though to just to begin, all you need to do, I mean you can start with some of the things that are here, or you can delete them by simply clicking on something and hitting the delete button, delete key. When you delete things, it doesn't actually throw them away. It just puts them in the trash the same as on your computer desktop, and they're still there. So that if I wanted to go to the trash, which is down here, I could look in the trash and I can look and see what's in the trash. I can then select them one by one and actually destroy them or destroy all of the stuff in the trash. But if I want to get something back out of the trash, all I have to do is refer to it and say I want to add an element. And if I type I, it shows these two things that I could pull back out of the trash. And if I click on images and hit enter, it, it comes back and it's back. So that, that's to do with the trash part. If I actually want to create a relationship map, I can start here and say I want to create an element, and I type the, the label that I want in the element. And if I put two spaces any place, it works as a carriage return. This is an element. So notice that it shows up here with a carriage return after is, because this is an element. If you have no elements on the screen, this is where you get the first one. Once you get one, it's much easier because you can simply hold down the Alt key or the Option key on a Mac, mouse over this, click and drag. This is another element. So now I have two of them. And the connection between them, if I click and select the connection, notice there are two little direction things here so that I can reverse the direction if I want to, or I can make it multi-directional. And if I want to indicate that there's a delay between these two, I can select here and put parallel lines on it indicating a delay. Now, notice that if, if you're unfamiliar with the conventions for developing relationship models, you can use this link to get to Relationships 101, which is here in the Prospectus Project, along with Implications 101, which is a number of examples, and Storytelling 101 each one of them having a video that you can watch to, to better understand developing relationship models. Now, once I develop an element, some things are constants or variables, and some things are stocks, things that accumulate over time, like lake and water in the lake or, or garbage in the landfill. So this is predefined for you in terms of, if you define it to be a stock, then it'll color it green, and if you define it to be a variable, which is the default, it doesn't color it at all. Connections can be either adds to the same, adds to, or in the opposite direction. 
and once you select that it will color it either blue or red the two standard definitions the other component here is if there is some aspect of the model for which there is a question if you select an item and go to tags and add a question mark to the tag it will color it yellow it just, I used to do a shadow around this, but the shadow didn't work with loops, so um, I went to actually coloring the, the font, which works with um, elements, it works with connections, and it works with loops. If you want to edit the text of this, you can simply click here and change this and add more text or edit the text. If you want to put labels on connections you can do that too notice that the default label for a connection is the from and the two labels of the elements it's connected to comma and whatever you put on it so if you put a, a label on it here this is my label notice that that shows up here and if you were then to go ahead and add a question mark to it it would go ahead and color that text in yellow. The, the last part portion is, is loops. A loop is kind of a misnomer definition. A loop is something comprised of any two or more connections and the things that it's connected to. So if you want to define a loop, you simply come down here and say add loop. Type what you want it to be. And then you go ahead and say, well, I don't want that one. I want this and this and then I hit enter and that's what this loop is defined to be now loops are kind of neat because if you click and hold on it it will show you what's part of the loop and sort of hide everything else and if you click and hold in the background all the rest of it will come back that's pretty much the all of the mechanics that you need to be aware of it's all associated with creating the relationship model as opposed to the mechanics in the background of how did, how did all this get defined so that it does the coloring and the legend and how did the variable definitions get defined so it does the coloring and if you're I said if you're not familiar with the conventions for relationship models this link will get you to a video that talks about that now there's also Storytelling with Kumu, which is this online learning program, self-paced, that I put together. That's all of what I think I understand about developing uh, stories of unfolding relationship models in Kumu. And notice that most of well, all of these elements have little um, images on them. The, what I've defined for this Kumu 101 is a set of conventions so that if you put an image on an element and let's call this let's just call this a uh, sample uh, if I click over here it says select a file or add the URL that defines the image that you want displayed so Kumu now allows you to select a file from your desktop and add that as the image and it will show up here. The, um, James Bryan Cameron in uh, Scotland developed almost 800 of these images for me uh, over a period of several years. And if you click on this link in Kumu 101, it will take you to this Google Drive folder where you can download uh, these eight zip files that contain almost 800 of these various and sundry images that are all 400 by 400 um, JPEG files that you can use then use in your uh, Kumu models if you want to. You can also simply use URLs of images that are out on the web someplace. The, pro the difficulty is that stuff on the web is constantly changing. In the storytelling with Kumu, um, there's a place in here that talks about using an online service called Cloudinary, which you can use for free to manage images that you put into here 
and I, I rely on this very heavily in that it's where I keep all of my images that I use in my Kumu models and other places. And I've been using this for over three years now, I think, and I've still not exceeded the capacity for the free version of it. So uh, overall, um, Kumu 101 is simply developed to provide a beginning for creating relationship models without having to worry about all of the aspects of Kumu that happen in the background. So hope you found this interesting and I'll see you in another video soon. Bye.